Uh, the story developed uh, about uh, a little over seven years ago when a friend of mine gave me a book about Omar Khayyam in English and um, I started reading it and fell in love with the message and of what the what this incredibly important historical figure was all about. Uh, but prior to that, of course, you know, the, the, the greatest influence on me was my father uh, who died of brain cancer 11 years ago and he used to tell me a lot of stories about uh, my heritage and my culture through poetry but of course couldn't care for it at the time and when I was listening to it, uh, you know, when I was growing up, it was always in the back of my mind but, you know, it was something that was kind of relegated to the, the, the back part of, the, of, of my memory. Uh, but, you know, it came, uh, it resurfaced, of course, when I started uh, revisiting it in the English language and finding the depth and meaning and the truth behind it. Glad to see you. Hi there. Uh, Peter you number two. Hey, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm Charles Acosta. I'm with Arrival Pictures, the co-distribution company on this film. It's been a great honor to be involved with this film. We started this theatrical run back in June of this year, and it's been extremely well received in all the cities we've gone. We've gone Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, just recently opened up in Boston and DC, and now we're here in, back in Texas, in Austin, Texas. So with no further ado, I will introduce to you the director, writer, producer, Mr. Kayvon Mashayek. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate, appreciate the fact that you guys have come out uh, this evening in the holiday season. So first of all, I'd like to say happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And uh, um, it's wonderful, absolutely, to be back home in Texas. I've been traveling on the road for six months promoting this film with Mr. Charles Acosta. Um, it has a cast and crew of over 300 people from 12 different countries who came together 200 miles north of the Afghan border during a war on terror to complete. It is a 100% independently produced, financed, and distributed film, which makes your patronage here all the more important for me because without you, we can't stay here. Um, with that in mind, uh, I'm, I'm going to stop talking and uh, let you guys watch the movie and, uh, and uh, I'll be back to speak with you after the film to answer any and all of your questions about what it took to make it and how it was made and so on and so forth. So with that, I welcome you and thank you for coming to The Keeper, The Legend of Omar Khayyam. It is a gift from God. How else would a little boy know such things? You could take the boy. He could work for you. We'll see, we'll see. God bless you. Omar, come and meet Professor Imam Muwafak. But he's a small boy. What can a boy this small possibly know? Show him, Omar. You are wasting my time, woman. What? You'll do some chores for me, but I'll take you as a student. I'll pay him also, so you'll have enough to eat. You are most kind, sir. Okay. Well, he personifies everything that I, I find attractive about a character from that time era, uh, from that time period. Uh, a person who balanced reason and faith, he was a genius with the soul of a poet, uh, and uh, somebody who in, in Persian history made a very valuable contribution not only to science and mathematics but also to a school of thought which uh, was dying out uh, in the 11th century. Uh, uh, basically an intellectual, an intellectual in exile, so to speak, a person who, who uh, uh, introduced this reason of, uh, this concept of reason above faith at a time when it was uh, deeply heretical to do so. the fact that you uh, portray the story that is in the past was neglected, kind of like um, the director Ramin Sherry, who uh, wrote and produced and directed the movie Mariam, mm -hmm. um, about you know a story of the you know, Holocaust, a girl growing. Do you see yourself in the future making movies about your journey to America and um, kind of like a story of how you were accepted into the American society? Um, that's a very valid and great question. I mean, you know, when it comes to uh, making movies, you have to be inspired to make a movie that you feel 
is necessary for you to tell the story. In other words, I mean, I, I actually have a story like that, that I did my, one of my first short films was that exact subject matter about a little boy coming to America and feeling neglected, so on and so forth. But I've moved on from that. I mean, to me, it's more important to go after what I believe, you know, um, I can contribute to it, basically Iranian American cinema, this new wave of cinema. I grew up on an appetite of uh, Stanley Kubrick and Ridley Scott and Steven Spielberg and Giuseppe Tornatore. I mean, these are the filmmakers that have inspired me. So I want to move on and do films that um, uh, truly uh, encapsulate my vision of how I see things. And that's what independent cinema is all about. Although some of you may disagree with the way that, that the film it may have been done, you know, it's, it's the heart and soul of the message of the film that one carries with them. And at the end of the day, when you sat through a movie for 90 minutes, you always remember those moments in the film that either touched you or it didn't. And film is all about that. If it makes you think and if it makes you feel, then it's a relevant film for you to remember down the line. Uh, tell us about your decision uh, that basically we have more Persians uh, spoken in contemporary America than in 11th century Persia. Well, you have to understand that this story, once again, is told through the eyes of an 11-year-old, a 12-year-old boy living in, in, in America. And uh, his canvas of his, and of his imagination of taking you back to 11th century is done in such a way that he is speaking the language he's most articulate in. Very much like myself, when I came to the United States, my father used to say, I'll pay you a dollar for every word of Farsi and every page of Farsi you'd read, and I still wouldn't do it. I couldn't care less about my Persian heritage. I couldn't care less about poetry. I, couldn't, I didn't understand it, and, and I was very frustrated because at the time when we came here, the hostage crisis was going on. And so everybody, especially if you live in a Texas, well, you know, that's just the kiss of death, you know, if you're going around trying to wave your Iranian flag. So, you know, this boy, you know, is, is uh, you know, he's trying to very, very much to deal with these, these issues. And, and as the story is being told by his brother in Farsi, he is taking you back in, in his imagination to tell you this story in the language he's most articulate in, even though he, he'd love to be able to speak it the way his brother speaks it. So in, 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 uh, in linguistics, there's a thing called code switching, and I don't know if you know what that is. And that's the ability to, to speak two languages at one time and interlace you know, your words in English and in Farsi together. Now, uh, also bear in mind, when you're making a theatrical motion picture, we spent a year test focusing, mo uh, test focusing this film. And our audiences uh, didn't want to read subtitles. And, uh, you know, when we did, and, and, and when you're trying to release a film, you have to think about, you know, who's out there to support you in the movie theaters to come and see this film. And so far, 90% of our audiences have been Americans to come out, that have wanted to come see this film to understand something about Persian history and culture, but not be intimidated by reading uh, subtitles. Um, was casting something you started really early on, like almost after you had written it, or was, it a, was there some time before you went into casting, and where all did you look for your casting? Casting was a nightmare for this film, because uh, as, I was, as I was explaining, we couldn't get people to go to Uzbekistan, because, you know, think about that. Hey, guys, we have no completion bond, we have no terrorism insurance, we don't have all the money yet. You know, you're, telling, you know, you're trying to pitch that story to an actor, and they're like, yeah, well, I don't want to go. You know, and, and we had a casting director in London, uh, and our casting director fortunately got us Vanessa Redgrave. And once Vanessa Redgrave got attached, and all of a sudden, you know, you started seeing the clouds part because everybody wanted to be attached for the film that had Vanessa Redgrave in it. And so, you know, because she believed in the story, she believed in the heart and soul of the story. And uh, I can tell you that, you know, when I, because she had, she had cast approval, I'm sorry, she had a, a script approval on, on the picture. So, when I flew over to London, I, I changed all the entire script, all of her lines. And when I got there, you know, she called me over to her house, and I went over to see her, and and, she, and, uh, and I told her, I said, Miss Redgrave, she goes, call me Vanessa, darling. And, you know, and, and she goes, and I was like, okay, great, Vanessa, sorry. I changed the, all the lines that you were supposed to speak, and I've changed this. And she goes, well, thank you for untying my hands. And she was so incredibly collaborative, so incredibly helpful and open to my suggestions because she believed in the heart and soul of this film which is, is stated in the 58th minute of the film, if you were paying attention, which is, you know, one day your life will end, and the only thing that will remain are the moments in your life when you've lived your life to the fullest. And if you're lucky, those moments live on in the lives of the people you have touched. That is the essence of this film. And if, you know, if you're able to look beyond what you see on the surface of this film and, and take a more inward journey, you will see all the metaphoric things that are being stated, which leads you to the last line in the film, which is when he says, the grandfather says, it's not Omar's poetry that was important, 
It's the poetry of his life. It's the thing that we all seek, that zeitgeist, that balance between what is right and what is wrong and you know, what is faith and what is reasonable and the things in our life that we desire and the things in our life that we can't have. But all these things that, go, uh, that work in confluence to shape our character today is, is really what poetry is all about. Never stop believing in yourself, and, and uh, if you make a promise to yourself, make sure you keep it, because you'll have no one to blame at, in, the, in the end of the game but yourself. And I can tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased uh, with, with the way this film turned out and the response uh, over it, that it's, uh, it's been truly, truly heartwarming.